Okay, Shalom, Shalom, Kom Yasha Allah, Koholimla, Yahweh Bashim El Shai, Bahashim Rakahakodash, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. And just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akawaf that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim El Shai to the best of their ability. This is Yahanan Awaf just coming at you with another quick lesson, praying that it's edifying. And, um, I was just reading and uh, was in the book of Nehemiah and just kind of dawned on me. I think it was verse 10. But um, basically, as the Hebrew Israelites, this movement is moving forward and it's becoming so huge that it can't be contained. It can't be contained anyway because of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and this is his will. This is a part of prophecy. But the thing of it is, is Esau is going to come up and really go hard about trying to stop it. He's not going to stop doing that. So we have to continue on focusing, you know, stand straight ahead, continue praying, continue fasting, continue reading and just stay focused, man. Stay focused. Stay on the path. You know what I'm saying? Because Esau is about to come and, 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 and try and throw a monkey wrench in this whole thing. But he's not going to be able to do anything about it. Um, but anyway, let me see here. Verse 10. Uh, let me see. I'm going to start at verse 9. Nehemiah 2 and 9. It says, then I came to the governor's beyond the river and gave them the king's letter now the king had sent captains of the army and horsemen with me here's the point right here verse 10 when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant the Ammonite heard of it it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of Israel so it grieved them to even be even considering What's going on with these so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans? You know, which we knew our nationality at the time. It's just that we've been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. So that's really making Esau even more pissed off. He's wroth right now. He's 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 pissed that you know what I'm saying. You are no longer calling on white Jesus. You are no longer um, celebrating um um uh, uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving and you know because see that cuts into their money. And then they also knows that. It brings us closer to our, our power, man. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. They don't want that. They understand that once we come up, they're going down. <laughs> you know? So when I seen this, I'm like, okay, bet. So I pulled up some precepts. And so here we are right here. Let's let's ease on down into it a little bit. Let me see here. So basically, Nehemiah, he's going out to assess, you know what I'm saying? Um basically jerusalem or the you know he's 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 checking out the area at night you know what i'm saying by himself so to speak okay it's a he went to all the gates he was checking everything out you know because this was the rebuilding uh so to speak um all right let me see here let me start at 15 it says then i went up in the night by the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley and so returned and the rulers knew not whether I went or what I did. Neither had, neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, nor to the priests, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that I, nor to the rest that did the work. Then said I unto them, Ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the walls of Jerusalem, the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more no more a reproach and see that's what's happening right now you know you know spiritually we're being built back up as a, as a nation of people right before the um these these uh, our enemies eyes and this and they're afraid of that man because they understand that you know now that this prophecy has come to pass their time is is is, is short short <laughs> straight up it says then um verse 18 then i told them of the of the hand of then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Now, here's the point right here. But when Sambalot, the Horonite, and Tobiah, the servant of the Ammonite, and Geshem, the Arabian, heard it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, what is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? See? 
So you got these people who see these nations, you know, at first they were coming up and they was, you know, just scoffing, scorning. You don't see a whole lot of that now. You don't see a whole bunch of so-called white people running up on the Hebrew Israelite camps, asking no questions, trying to defend white Jesus Christianity. That phase is over with because <laughs> you used to see a lot of it. They don't they, they don't even want to even touch. They, they 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 go. They cross the other side of the street when they see the Hebrew Israelites on the highways and byways. So we've gone. We it's been kicked into another phase of, um you know, this truth, man. You know, it's going into another cycle, so to speak. So it is it's, it's like a, a a big ass boulder rolling downhill that can't be stopped. And they're pissed about it. So but they are trying to throw little obstacles in the way. And then we also know that eventually, you know, because they're trying to link us to, you know, Islam and link us to damn Hamas and link us to a bunch of bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and trying to make us seem as if we just some some people that's out here ready to harm people. Well, we're not doing anything but reading the scriptures. But it's building up the dry bones. That flesh is coming back on the dry bones and we're being built up. And these nations are starting to see it. And they're hey, they having conversations, man. <laughs> Don't think that they're not having no conversations. They might get together and get to talking about some climate change, you know. But what did the lady say down in, um, I think the, they had that conference down in Atlanta. And the Israeli lady, she said that the problem with Israel is the young black community. Why do you think she said that? You know, all these leaders are out here. They, you know, on a grand scale, these presidents, these prime ministers, these 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 dignitaries don't think that they're not talking about us, man. They 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 like, well, hold on. What's going on? See, it says, what is this thing that you do? Will you rebel against the king? This is what they're asking, basically. You know, will you rebel against, you know, what we've set up? Pretty much. You're not going to serve white Jesus anymore. Oh, you don't believe that your God is a white man no more. You don't believe in us. That bothers them, man. <laughs> and then, I mean, you can just see um, Israelites just coming up on a grand scale, even um, from the two third level. Jake out here doing, <laughs> you know, far better than um, Esau is, man, or any of these other nations, really, when it comes down to it. Jake out here not living super bad. You know, we you know, we, we're in the bottom of things. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, Jake can go out here and work a job, man, and, and, and he has a decent house. He has, a you know, hell, Jake riding better than Esau a lot of the times. You know what I'm saying? Jake is doing things, man. Jake, you know, can can enter into any professional sport, you know, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Before the so-called white man, we running all that shit. You see, even on that level. But just think of it from a spiritual level as to how we're growing, man. OK, so now. This is chapter four, Nehemiah four and one. But it came to pass that when Sambalot heard that we built the wall, he was wroth and took great indignation and mocked the Jews. See, and that's a representation of all these nations. They're they're pissed. How dare these niggas come up and think that they're anything other than black? We told you you black, nigga. We told you you a nigger, and that's where you better keep your mindset at. And see, when the straight comes down to it, you know. During slavery, I mean, you know what I'm saying? They was able to, you know, scare the shit out of us and and and, and make us take on um, white Jesus Christianity by beating the shit out of us and, and doing all kinds of atrocities to us. Having our people stand there and watch a person's limbs be ripped off or his balls, his ball sack being cut off and stuff like that, man. Scaring the shit out of Jake, man. Then put the woman in charge of the household to raise these effeminate ass boys. So they, you know, as far as, that goes, see, that, that brings, see, that brings strength, man. That brings integrity. That brings, with this truth comes a lot of stuff, man. It's a lot of power to this truth. That brings integrity for real. See, uh, Esau don't want you to have no integrity. Now, one thing I will say about the NBA, the NFL, you got dudes in the NFL. Let's say, for instance, you got dudes in the NFL, so-called black man. That's like 400 pounds. Easy. Six, seven, six, eight. Motherfucker can pick up a car and throw it. But he's soft as hell. Mentally upstairs, he, he, he's effeminate. He has all that strength, muscle upon muscle. And see, that's the way that Esau wants us to be. He wants us to be in that mindset. But see, with the Hebrew Israelites in this movement, now we're starting to move past that. Like, look, man, nah, that shit is over with. That cycle is done, man. You, you, you no longer. And that's why you, you can't serve God and mammon. See, Jake do a lot of that because, you know what I'm saying, they know, okay, this is my job. I got to, you know, say, but I mean, you know, with us, as far as Hebrew Israelites, man, hey, if it comes down to it, if, if my boss was to see me at a camp, you know, I'm not going to the job and just telling them what I do. Meet me at the camp. 
You know what I'm saying? But if my boss just so happened to work, or the, the employer or the, you know, the person that's over me at the job, so to speak, if he rides by and see me at, on a corner during camp and he goes back and, and, and tell the company, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> fuck you, man. Uh, quit the fuck you. You want to fire me? Who gives a shit? But see, that that's the difference between us and a regular two third type of Jake. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, nah, that's my job, man. You hiding and shit. You don't want nobody to know. You know, like I said, I'm not going to go. It's, it's not wise to go to the job and, you know, because you're there to work. When you go to a job, you're just there to do your job. You know what I'm saying? Do your work, get your money, um, get your daily bread and, and, and your needs. Take care of your bills. You're not th there to go and tell the so-called white man you're Esau. You're going into captivity. and No, nah, that's not what you're there for. But if they see you out on the highways and byways, you should be prepared to stand strong and be like, man, fuck y'all in that job. You know what I'm saying? Because the Lord is the one that giveth and takes the way. And that's a difference right there, right? Okay, but anyway, but these people are, they're, they're, they're pissed right now. Verse 2, it says, Nehemiah 4 and 2. And he spake before his brethren and army of Samaria and said, What do these feeble Jews, will they fortify themselves? See, they're calling us feeble. You know, they're like, what, what y'all going to do? What y'all doing? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbish which are burned? Now Tobiah, the Ammonite, was by him, and he said, Even that which they build, if a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. So they mocking, you know what I'm saying? They're like, man, they ain't about to do nothing, you know what I'm saying? Even if they build a wall, that damn wind blow and knock it over. Because, <laughs> see, that's the way that they look at Jake. They don't, they don't really look at us like a people that can really sustain. They think that we, they really made it to the point where you need us if you're, if you're planning to survive. You can't survive on your own. You can't you can't survive without us. This is what the so-called white man has placed into our people mind. Our people are very, very dependent upon Esau. That's why the scriptures talks about um, woe to him that goes down to Egypt for help. I think that's that Isaiah 31. And, um, you know, uh, I think that's what it is. Uh, Isaiah. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Matter of fact, let me see here. Let's lock it. I want to ease off the screen here. I already got the precept set up there, so we'll just do it from here. Yeah, man, that's that. That our people are very dependent upon Esau, and that's why um you know you go into Michael two and ten. It tells you to um get away from this man, man. You know, come out of this place. This is not our rest. It will destroy you, even with a sword destruction. And our people are sorely destroyed. Isaiah thirty one and one it says, "Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help." And stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. See, it says, whoa, it's going to be destruction to our people that's going to run to this so-called white man when shit hits the fans trying to get what they need. Instead of calling on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. But see, like I said, again, this is what Esau thinks. He, 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 he has made it to the point where our people are so dependent upon them. That's how downtrodden we are. That's how that's how far down we've fallen, man. You know, <laughs> I mean, you can't get around it, man. Well, here you go. You got the silliest people on the fucking planet, man. That's over you and got you thinking that you need him when actually he has built up everything that he has off of you. Anyway, verse seven. It jumps to verse seven. Verse seven in this um precept package here or precept hookup in the blue letter it says but it came to pass that when Sambalot and tobiah and the arabians and the ammonites and the ashdodites heard that the walls of jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped then they were very wroth they were very mad see they start see they starting to see these breaches you know these 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 you know the holes in the walls you know the things you know what i'm saying the shit is being built up where it's it's, it's secure it's stationary. It's, it's solid. See, this is what the Lord is doing right now. He he's 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 making his 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 temple solid, man. You know what I'm saying? Because we are the temple of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Brick by brick, man, this baby is being built up, and 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 these nations can't take it, man. Now it jumps to uh chapter six here. Let me see. It says now it came to pass when Sambalot and Tobiah the Jeshim, the Arabian. And the rest of our enemies, see that? The rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall and that there was no breach left therein, though at the time I had set up the doors upon the gates. Let's see. 
that Sambalot and Jisham sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some in some one of the villages in the plain. Oh, no. But they thought to do me mischief. See that? That's why the scripture says to never trust thine enemy. See? And you got people that's, you know, you, you got Edomites, man, that's, that's infiltrating, um, um, you know, a lot of these camps and stuff like that. Because you got chocolate colored Edomites. It's, it's, it's Edomites that look like our people that's slipping right into these camps, man. You know? Slipping right into these camps. You know, we, we already know how Esau gets down, man. It says, and I sent messengers unto them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease? Whilst I leave it and come down to you. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort. So see, they're going to be ongoing, 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 nonstop, trying to get us to stop this work and, and basically trying to set us up. Right? It says, um, it says, yet they sent unto me four times after this sword, and I answered them after the same manner. Then sent Sambalot his servant unto me in like manner the fifth time with an open letter in his hand, wherein was written, it is reported among the heathen. And Geshmu saith it that thou and the Jews think to rebel. See that this <laughs> this is this, this, hey, you can't make this up. This is Esau. He, he, he's seeing us as if this is complete treason when it comes to Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. He'll tell you that you're in a free country, that you're free to um, all these all these religions here. A person can be a Muslim here. They can be a damn Buddhist here. They can be uh, into Hinduism here. They can be into any religion that they want to be in. But when it comes to you so-called blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans waking up and saying, hey, no, we're Israelites. We're not these names that you called us when you colonized us. That's a problem. Why is that such a problem when everybody else can do what they want to do? That lets you know right there that there's power in this truth, man. Okay. It said, and also, you know, when you go into the book of Ezra, it was like that in the book of Ezra. You know, when, when you know, if you read through that, it was pretty much kind of like the same similar situation, man. It says, um, and Geshmu saith it, and that thou and the Jews think to rebel. For which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king, according to these words. And thou hast also appointed prophets <laughs> to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now it be reported to the king, according to these words, Come now, therefore, and let us take counsel together. So, you know, hey, this is this is the damn enemy, man. He's trying to be slick as hell. Like, look, oh, y'all trying to do this. Y'all going to rebel against the king. Y'all got your own king. Y'all doing this. Y'all doing that. See, it, nothing has changed, man. That's why scripture talks about nothing is new under the sun, man. But this is the last captivity, bro. This is a wrap. We praying that it is for real. But, uh, you know, <laughs> I, the scripture wise, me speaking as a man, I believe this is it, man. <laughs> Esau, you're not going to get no other chance no, to have us for another couple of hundred years. Motherfucker, you crazy. Okay, it says, um, then I sent unto him saying, there are no such things done in the, and thou sayest because they lying. Esau is a damn devil, man. He's a damn deceiver. He's Satan, man. Damn adversary, man. <laughs> it says, um, then I sent unto him saying, there are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou fiendest them out of thy own heart. And that's what they doing. He like, man, no, y'all making that shit up. <laughs> For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work, and that it be not done. Now, therefore, O Yahweh, strengthen my hands. This is what we need to be praying for. When they come down, because they're going to come down hard. Shit going to get a little, little hectic. Shit going to be scary, you know, in a lot of situations. But what are we supposed to be doing? Praying to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah to strengthen our hands, man. Strengthen us, Yahweh. Strengthen us. Because we're going to see some shit, man. You know what I'm saying, man? You, when you see a person, man, because he, he's all vicious as hell. If you've never seen blood before, gore before, guts, I ain't, you know, we're not talking about no movie, you know? This man literally can, you know, that shit, man. Ain't no man don't tell him what this man, you know? <laughs> he's vicious. It's going to be a lot of torture going on. This man is going to try and torture Jake into um taking the MOTB. Okay? He says, strengthen my hands, oh Lord. It says, and um, afterwards, I came unto the house of um, Shemaiah, Shemaiah, Salakia, the son of Dalaiah, the son of Mehetabim, Mehet, 
to Bill, who was shut up. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us shut the doors of the temple for they will come to slay thee. See, yea, in the night will they come to slay thee. <laughs> and this is what Esau going to try and get down. Like, man, it says, and I said, should such a man as I flee? See, well, you're supposed to be standing strong, man, in this truth, man. Fuck that. We ain't fleeing nowhere. We, we, you know, we just praying to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah that he would give us what it takes to endure to the end. Is that what, um, um, you know, that was, you know, one of the promises, man, that we would endure to the end. It, he didn't say it was going to be easy. He says, and said such, and, and I said, should such a man as I flee, and who is there that being as I am would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. And lo, I perceived that Yahweh had not sent him, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me. For Tobiah and Sambalot had hired him. See that? These things are coming to pass, man. Esau is hiring people right now. There are camps popping up everywhere, man. You, you got this one camp. This motherfucker had a whole damn layout of Thanksgiving talking about your house side day with a big ass ham, man, with pulled pork on the side. Bacon in the corn, man. You know, you just never know. Some of these camps are being set up, man, by, by the FBI, CIA, or whoever the hell, you know. But Esau, he's he's getting grimy, man. He's he's like, no, we got to cut this shit out. We got to cut, hey, we got to cut into these niggas. What's it, what? They're becoming righteous. No, we need them to keep their pants hanging off their ass and smoking them new ports. <laughs> this is this is Esau's plan, man. This man don't that's how you know he's a complete enemy. Because he 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 he's pushing your downfall. He wants you to stay in a docile state. All he wants you to do is to be able to just have enough strength to get your ass up and go to work for him. That's it. That's it. He, this man, he, you know, he, he, Esau, the so-called white man, has never had your best interest in mind. You, Jake, man, y'all got to go. You, you, you got to just get away from this man. That Micah 2 and 10 again, man. <laughs> Come out of her. This is not our rest, man. For it shall destroy you even with the sword of destruction. We are destroyed as a people for, because of this man. He has completely destroyed us. And now his turn is coming because you reap what you sow. And he understands that, but he, you know, this, you know, this guy is actually stupid enough to really think that he can box with the Lord, man. <laughs> anyway, it says, therefore, was he hired that I should be afraid and do so and sin and that they might have matter for an evil report that they might reproach me. See that this is what's happening. This is real time, man. Nothing new is it's nothing new under the sun. It says, my God. Think thou upon Tobiah and Sambalot, according to these, these their works, even on the prophetess Noadiah. Here you go. <laughs> and the rest of the prophets. See that? That would have put me in fear. See? So what, what, what is he doing here? Nehemiah is praying a curse on their asses, man. What did it say? The prophetess? What do you think the so-called black, what do you, you think she's set up for? What do you think the, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American woman is set up for? Esau has set the whole thing up for the fall of the Israelite man. So, like I said again, man, you know, I didn't want to keep this long. I just was reading, and when I was studying earlier, and the precept sent me to Nehemiah, and I'm like, oh, I'm reading, and I'm like, oh, man, okay, all right, bet. By the spirit, you know what I'm saying? I'll just jump into it real quick, but, you know, you know, I'm praying that the, um, you know, this, this lesson is, um, edifying you know what i'm saying because we have to have a mindset and keep in mind that this man is about to come up real real nasty against us man but we have to continue on praying that's why we pray for the downfall of america pray like um nehemiah man we pray a damn curse on all this shit we pray a curse on all these nations these heathen especially esau we're praying for the downfall of this thing. We're praying for World War III to come on through. We're praying for this man to come on through with his MOTB so it can slap his... You know, because it's just going to be him. He's digging himself a pit. He's going to fall into the pit that he's digging. He's going to seriously reap what he sowed, and it's going to come upon him suddenly, man. So just keep that in mind, man. You know what I'm saying? Just know that, you know, our enemies are not going to give up. They're going to turn up. That's why we got to turn up. So with that, I pray that the lesson was edifying. Come